a breezy night at Utah State. I don't even know how they're holding that thing together. Let's revisit. Darius, your keys to the game for Utah State. Coaches always talk about running the football for the Aggies. They got DeMonte Mays, and you look at what he's done, a career night, 208 yards. So they definitely got that goal. New faces on defense, a couple of sacks, only giving up six points. Good by my book, which you'd like to see if there is an area of improvement for the defense is really that linebacking core. Bullard for the Wildcats as the tight end has really had a dominant game, and it's because of those linebackers in coverage. And next week, the stakes get a lot higher. You're going to USC, and yeah, USC's sure playing Alabama week one. They're going to be targeting those tight ends, that's for sure, once they watch the film. So definitely some stuff to work on for the Aggies. Get Myers on right on time. To, that was a real nice throw to Rodriguez. The senior receiver from Allen, Texas. This is a quarterback throwing the ball where only his wide receiver can get it. There's actually decent coverage there. But Myers able to get it in that bread basket of Rodriguez come up with the football. It's an excellent throw. And the Aggies continue to march on, eating up a lot of clock on this series. Go to the reverse. It was a lot of work for not a lot of payoff. Well defended. Chad Artist, the ball carrier. And Weber State did a nice job there, stretching it out, making sure everybody stayed in their positions. I personally was never a big fan of reverses, but they do serve a purpose in keeping that defense off balance and letting them know that there are other plays that we will run besides continuing to just pound the football. It's another version of a run. It also gets you to the outside, so it has its place. Just didn't get a lot of yards on that one for the Aggies. Myers the throw, and that was well defended. Still got it right in on the target. Interesting that, you know, up 31 to six with the win the way it is that they've kind of stepped away from the ground game a little bit. And, you know, Myers has been effective throwing the football, but given the lead and how well they've run it, over 300 yards on the ground. You have to wonder sometimes too, as a coach, in situations like this where you have a comfortable lead, there's certain plays that you wanted to see. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to see them even though it may not be the best use of a right. play in that regard. So that could be some of the issue for Matt Wells and his staff. There's some stuff they need to oh, see. Yeah, you got to experiment. Got to try it. That's how you deliver it. You want a first down, you have your guy run one yard beyond the sticks, make the catch. Van, Lu Van Lewin makes the catch and a perfect throw. It's exactly what I've been talking about though, Ari, when it's third down, regardless of how far the route's supposed to be, you got to get it to the sticks. Lindsey. Landon Tice makes the tackle. Continuing to eat up that clock right now. What a drive for the Aggies. Wondering if we're going to see Devontae Mays anymore tonight. At one point, I thought for sure he was going for 300. 208. And it's Lindsey. Bursts into the clear. He'll take it for the touchdown. 35 yards. Complete domination up front here. All right, watch this. Look at that hole. I mean, pay dirt immediately, untouched to the end zone. You got to give yeah. credit to this offensive line. They are just opening up some monster holes now. All right, I will say, I'm 30 years old. I think on that play, maybe I would have got 10 or 15 yards. I probably got run down behind from someone behind, but I think I would have got 10 or 15. Well, you know, friend, we, we live real close to we each do. other. I yeah. see you move around. You know, you look better in the suit, I think, than on the field <laughs> right now. So let's not try to overextend right. yourself. Okay. Your right. number starts with a three. <laughs> All right, we take a break. 38 to 6, Aggies in front. That is a beautiful look at the new press box, Maverick Stadium. Put a ton of money into renovating this stadium, $36 million. And let's take a look back at the keys for the Wildcats. We talked about Clark early on and him getting moving early. He's trying to get some of his confidence up. 
He's only got 107 yards, zero touchdowns. And the biggest key was stopping the run. You can see the numbers there with DeMonte, Mays, Hunt, Lindsey. They've given up over 300 yards. That's why this game is out of reach right now. Brandon Sherlin is back deep. This kick on the ground going to stay in play. That's a good bounce for the kicker. That thing might have taken a left. <laughs> Coach wouldn't have been real happy. <laughs> With all that gust of wind out there, it certainly could have went left. So it'll be first to 10 from the 25. All right, so a moment ago we were talking about Utah State just wanting to see some dirt, certain kinds yeah, of plays. Yeah, see some stuff, Is yeah. that the same thing you think for the Wildcats? Are you playing to win right now? I think you have to give yourself an opportunity to see some of the stuff that you know that you want to see. Some of the plays or players that you'd like to see what they could do. Guys who've had really good camp, you might want to give them an opportunity to see what they can do in live action. I mean, the game's fairly out of reach right now. So instead, you try to build the program. Coming off their first winning season in five years. So Jay Hill has the program going in the right direction. You have to respect what he's been able to do to as the uh, as the head coach for the Wildcats. And you look at his lineage and his toolage. I mean, he studied under Urban Meyer, Ron McBride, Kyle Whittingham. So some excellent coaches. Yeah, I mean, that Jay played, Hill's been he around. Played at Utah, spent 13 seasons on the staff at Utah. They've had so much success, and he understands. Utah football and recruiting players from Utah as we were with us at the beginning. A total of 77 players combined on these two rosters are from the state of Utah. Recruit in state, get the right guys into your program. Really respect just the, the jump that Jay Hill and his staff were able to make at Weber State last year. First two seasons, they only won a couple of games. Last year, they won six games. And they came on. They won four of their last six, and they only lost 10 seniors. And they've got eight all Big Sky players back. Got to respect where the program is going right now. It's a tough atmosphere for anyone to come in here and win against the Aggies. It's Garrett. And the second effort pays off first down for the Wildcats. Got to keep those legs churning. Coach used to always say, churn those legs like you're churning butter. I never really knew what that meant because I had never churned butter before. But <laughs> I figured. It didn't, it didn't come up when you were slumming at Notre Dame. It did it not come camp. up in the They didn't have you working in the campus. dairy no. department no, on no, campus? Okay. It did not. Huh. But I, try, I, I tried to figure that out <laughs> without having direct experience. Thompson, the ball carrier. I'll tell you this, he's built like a fullback, but he's pretty good with the ball in his hands. Shifty, he's got some nice balance too with being able to carry defenders or knock a guy off. He's just gonna come to the left side of that offensive line. Another nice hole and Thompson, keeping those legs moving and carrying defenders. Yeah, 215 pound senior. He's played well. I mean, he, when he they has. go to the film, they're gonna say 35 played well. Eric Wilkes on crutches. Yep. Thompson's gotten, gotten a lot of carries. Been a part of the some, offense. Certainly gotten some opportunities there. Again, the starting running back for the Wildcats, Eric Watts. We didn't we didn't see what happened to him. He only carried one, he only carried the ball one time. We didn't see exactly what happened to him, but as it stands, he's on crutches on the sidelines. He was their leading rusher from a year ago. So Thompson really taking advantage of his opportunities. Brings up a third down and short for the Wildcats. You have to think that they can get their tight end. Andrew Voller involved again. He's number 87 at the bottom of that line on your screen. And they dump it off. Not, uh, let's see, might have just enough for the first down. Looks like it is. With the tackle, it is enough for a first down. This is Tui Satuwala, the other tight end. They got a two tight end set here. Both tight ends running a flat route. And you were excited about watching him play. You wanted to see what he could do. And he, it's really been Bowler who's been the go-to guy at tight end. The thing that we do know is that the tight end position is, is so vital to this Wildcat offense and what they do schematically. 
And they've been able to win those matchups against that inexperienced linebacking core for the Aggies. Thompson with carry, four yards on first down. Continuing to play their game. Put this in context that in 2013, same two teams mm -hmm. at Utah State, the final score was 70 to 6. Yeah, it got out of hand real quickly. Chuck, Chucky Keaton had five touchdowns in the first half in that game. So you have to give credit to the Wildcats for keeping it close through most of the game. But the, the strength of the Aggies and that dominant offensive line has really been the difference so far in this game. Darius, one thing when I started working in the Mountain West back in 2009 that I was immediately struck by was that when you have programs that have a lot of players that go on a two-year mission. Get a shot of. Yeah, there's Wilkes. Eric Wilkes there to start running back. When you have players that go on a two-year mission, 27 players for Utah State, 24 for Weber State, usually one of the teams is going up against a team that doesn't have a lot of players. You can have a 23-year-old offensive tackle blocking an 18-year-old. But in this case, you've got two schools where both of them have a lot of veteran players. Certainly something to consider there where you have guys who are who might be a little bit older in age but still freshmen and sophomores because of that two two year mission. That ball off the fingertips. I mean you combine these teams, they have 24 married players. I mean, guys that are just you know at a different sure, stage in sure. life than yep. a lot of freshmen and sophomores at other schools. Well the other thing too you gotta think about is how your body changes over yep. that time when you're 19, 20, 21 to 23, 24. A little bit of grown man strength that, that some also, of these guys can have. I mean, that was what I was struck by as I saw these offensive linemen. And back then when Utah and BYU were still in the Mountain West, and you thought, wow, these are grown men. These are not <laughs> these are not your typical 19-year-old offensive guards. 23 years old yeah. going against ni a 19-year-old. I like to think that 23-year-old will win every time. That's a real good punt into the win. It's not gonna, the net's not going to be what he wants, but he's able to drive the football. We will take a break, come back, it'll be Aggie football. They are in front, 38 to 6. So glad that you're with us. Opening night for Mountain West football. Our look alongside Darius Walker. Been an entertaining game, dominated by Utah State. Utah State, 338 yards on the ground. Their stud tailback, Devontae Mays, 18 carries, 208 yards, and three touchdowns. What do you expect to see from the Aggies here? Eight minutes to go in the fourth. I think this is a good time where you could get some of your younger players involved, get some guys some opportunities to see how they fare in live action. Or maybe get some opportunities for some of these younger backs. As you see here now, number 34, Justin Hervey, comes in at running back. and to give him an opportunity to see what he looks like, the sophomore from Beaumont, Texas. Damian Hobbs is in at quarterback. Kent Myers probably done for the night. They keep it on the ground, and there is the burst from Herbie. Justin Herbie, look at him go. The wheels, the speed, touchdown Aggie. 80 yards. Well, if that's any indication of what you got in your sophomore running back. It's going to be good things to come for the Aggies on the ground. Look at the wheels here, and it's all about that extra gear already. Just take it to pay dirt. Most guys don't have that extra gear at the end. Get to top yeah. speed, and then just you can go a little faster in another gear. Herbie's certainly got it. Got to be excited for the young back. First and touch, touchdown. And that was the first thing we brought, when we brought him up in the meeting, straight speed. Straight line speed. Yep. That's what they talked about was the straight line speed. Matt Wells and his staff were excited. For the Extra future, point is Justin Hurd. It is good. 45 to 6. A little bit of celebration. One carry, 80 yards, and a touchdown. Great night for the Aggies. 45 to 6, and there's Herbie. And he looks like he's working out with Devontae May. Yeah, it's kind of swole over <laughs> yeah. there, man. Those uh, rubber bands on his arms are really struggling. <laughs> Just trying to hold on. The rushing yards for Utah State, 418. That really has been the difference 
for the Aggies is that ground game. And Harvey there, I mean, the question really is, Ari, is how fast can you run 80 yards? I mean, it was only 13 seconds that came off the clock there for well, that you got to remember, the quarterback still has to get the football <laughs> and walk it over to you. I say he did it in 10 flat. 10 flat? Yeah. That's oh, pretty good. It's pretty good for 80 yards in cleats and pads. Sherlin is deep and not going to have a chance at this one. Now the wind is going more down the field instead of across. Now I know this game is 45 to 6, sorry, and it's, it's, it's gotten a little bit out of hand, but Weber State came in and played a solid game. They, they were close throughout the game and really tried to battle back into this contest. It's just the Aggies are a little bit too strong up front for them. They're, they're too have, stout. But if you go back, Darius, Towards the end of the second quarter, they had a drive where they got inside the 10. They came up with no points. no points. Then they got a touchdown, missed the extra point. I mean, there were opportunities. They could have gone in down one score. It would have been a different game. Yeah, you, you saw the, the the punt earlier where the, they ran into the kicker, and that extended their drive. They didn't capitalize on that as well. So the Wildcats had some opportunities. They just weren't able to take advantage. Clark delivers, and that is caught. Satuwala there, number 33. Well, he's finally coming end. on here. Starting to get some looks here. The tight end for the Wildcats, Satuwala. He's number 33 there. We've seen a lot of Andrew Volert, number 87. He's had an outstanding game as well. Yeah, he's really shined. Volert, five catches, 70 yards. Had a touchdown call back to, or not call back, but he was down. <laughs> they thought it was a touchdown, but he was down. So he's having an excellent game. Emmanuel Pooler, now the ball carrier, senior from Fontana, California. And again, three running backs we've seen tonight, all of them in their careers have rushed for more than 100 yards. And there's a fourth guy, Zach Smith, who missed all of last season, who's also, so they've had four guys who run for over 100 yards in a game. Really is a stable of backs for the Wildcats. And losing Eric Wilkes in the first half certainly was tough for the Wildcats, but they do have depth there. Clark delivers. Bachelor the catch. to bring up third and short. One thing that has also been surprising at this game for the Wildcats is Cameron Livingston. And the lack of targets for him, the lack of production for him, He's number one, 6'2", senior, 195 pounds, but he's a dominant player. Just haven't given him many opportunities nope. today. I mean, he's been in one-on-one -on -one coverage almost every play out there on the edge. Three catches, 11 yards. And again, he's one-on-one. One-on-one -on -one. One -on again, yeah. It's Pooler, and Pooler, well, he's close. He needed to get to just past the 50, and he's just shy of the 50. But he figured, just go ahead and go for it. It's fourth and less than one. Seems like it'd be a good time to take the gamble and go for it. Keep this offense on the field, and better yet, keep your defense off the field because we see what the Aggies are doing on the ground. Sometimes the way you slow an offense down is, is keeping your offense on the field. Flag before the play, and Clark's really happy because he knows senior quarterback, he drew them off. That's experience working for you right there. Hard count, get him to jump. Offside, defense, number 56. That five-yard penalty results in a first down. Schuster, redshirt sophomore from... Long Beach, California, played at one of the great high school programs in California at Long Beach Poly. He's a big boy and a good player. Just got caught being a little overly aggressive. Good game, you finally get an opportunity to play. You want the young guys to do well, but they got to understand situations. It's a learning situation for Schuster. Play action, Clark. Find some time here. Throws on the run, and he had a guy wide open but couldn't make the throw. And again, the wind is a huge factor. I mean, that wind is coming across the field. The passing game for both teams, I mean, 
passing yards for Weber State 130 for Utah State 100. Well you can also see the quarterbacks during each play when they do call the passing play they're not even looking at the deep route not even considering it regardless of who it is or if they're open or not they're not even looking for it because of that win. Yeah, we've seen two punts from going this direction 118 yards 122. Now there's Livingston and that's a safe throw they could have done any time in the game no matter what the wind is just let your playmaker touch the football. And coaches do this all the time they say this all the time no matter what the situation is I want to make sure that I get the ball in my playmakers hands. Livingston is one of those guys for the Wildcats and they just have not found ways to get him the ball. Right, they usually Screens have like this yeah. slot passes like that are ways to get the ball in his hands. You usually have like right a number in mind I want him to have 10 touches. How do Absolutely. we get it to him? 10 How do we times? do it? No matter what the situation is, we got to figure out a way to get this guy the ball. And the Wildcats just haven't done that for Livingston. Third down. And timeout, Wildcats. We will take timeout. a break. Utah State. Weber State. Opening night. Strong performance, half. leading 45 to 6. We've still got four minutes to play here in Logan. Devontae Mays, what a night, a historic night for him, a career-high 208 yards, three touchdowns. He is the Campus Insiders player of the game, and here is the Campus Insiders play of the game. Oh, we're going to wait one play. Hold on. Clark keeps it himself. A flag is down. Clark picks up way more than he needed for the first down. All right, Campus Insiders player of the game and play of the game, Devontae Mays. It's all about that balance and then one on one with Burton in space. And I think that's the part of Demonte Mays' game that I'm so impressed with now. We knew he could run in between the tackles and break tackles, but could he make guys miss in space? This play right here is evidence that he's got that ability. He's got that talent in his bag. He's a complete back. I mean, if, if we can see him catch the ball out of the backfield and see how he does in pass pro, he's got a shot at the next level. The penalty goes against the Wildcats, a holding. The third and long coming up for the Wildcats. Clark changing the play, empty backfield. They get it out quickly. The bachelor makes one guy miss, but he slowed him up enough. Teammates come and finish off the play. Just a gain of a little more than a yard. Ellison comes in, one of the backup free safeties. Ellison taking advantage of an opportunity in some playing time. This really has just been tough going for the Wildcats, though, in the second half, Farley. And it's, it's been that line of scrimmage. They are losing on both sides of the football, unable to get anything going on offense and can't stop the run on defense. It's tough sledding all game if you can't win that line of scrimmage. That's some punt into that win. Rodriguez, the fair catch. That is not easy with all that wind up there. This Saturday on Campus Insiders, join us for Air Force football. And the Falcons take on Abilene Christian. Kickoff at 2 Eastern, 1 Central. You can catch it on CampusInsiders.com. It'll also be streaming live on Twitter. It's going to be on that Twitterverse. That's what they call it. Ours. Twitterverse? The Twitterverse. You, you coaching me up? Yeah, yeah. I know you may not know about. Well, there's <laughs> nice. this thing called Twitter. It's 40 characters. I thought it was 140 characters. 140 characters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't teach someone if you don't know, right? <laughs> Stick your in the football. I was, right? I was testing you there. Oh, yeah. I was just testing yeah. you there. Hey, Mount West is doing the Twitter thing. I'm on the Twitter. You're on, you the, you're on yeah. the bandwagon yeah, now? I'm on the bandwagon. An old dog can learn a new trick. On the ground. Well, this time, Herbie's not going to take it 80 yards for the touchdown. Still got a pretty good average, though, right yes. now. <laughs> but he's <laughs> probably like, Coach, yards. I don't want any more carries. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. 80 yards per carry. carry. Who yeah, has that? Yeah. That's a win right there. It'll be interesting to see Damian Hobbs, though, number 11, the backup quarterback. He's a junior from Cedar Hill, Texas. Played sparingly last year. Yeah, only got a little bit of ball, time. Yeah. Barely threw the ball. These are great for younger players. 
live action is so much different than practice and going against a scout team or playing on the scout team. These reps are so vital. Herbie again, he just hurdles one guy, picks up a few yards. What do you he's, think? From, he's from Beaumont, Texas. I wonder if someone tallied it up how many running backs in America come out play of their area. high school football in Texas. It is a dominant running back area for sure. I mean, when you combine Florida, Texas, and California, those three states, right. the amount of talent in high school football that's produced in those three states. I mean, I came out of Georgia, but yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Georgia's got you some really good high school football, too. You can lump too. us in there. Yeah, I mean, take and it. Utah doesn't get a lot of national recognition, but Utah produces a lot of great talent, especially the big boys. Not as many at the skill positions, but, boy, they got a lot of linemen playing in the NFL. Played their high school football in Utah. And it's Hobbs. And Hobbs last year ran it for five and a half yards per carry. And it's enough for a first down. And, Ari, you mentioned that, that line play. And those players coming out of Utah. That's one of the things I love about Utah State and their offensive line. When you look across the board, every guy's around 300 pounds. And so as a running back, it's so vital to have those big bodies up front because you can maneuver around those guys, sh let them shield you, shadow those guys, really use that big frame to find your creases. So. And based on your recommendation, I guess Devontae Mays is taking her to Pizza Hut after the game, right? <laughs> Four large, one-topping pizzas was all Just I could get. Just one topping. That was all topping. I could get, man. It's like 50 cents for the other topping. <laughs> you got four pizzas, man. It adds up. I would have thought, you know, maybe Notre Dame would provide a post-game meal. You wouldn't even have to come up with it. They normally did, but it didn't help for the for the camaraderie. Yes, you know, with the, the bonding. You, the bonding. You take guys out. Different venue. Coaches aren't around. You can joke a little more, feel a little more at ease. All right. So everybody's favorite formation, victory formation. What did you learn in this game about Utah State and their prospects in 2016? It's very encouraging. Definitely a lot of productivity on the ground. It's a number of different backs that they have that they can trust with the ball in their hands, which is good. The offensive line and defensive lines were both dominant. You got to win that line of scrimmage. All positives. But the, the sort of question mark still is really Kent Myers and, and what his ability is. We didn't see him air it out as much. He had a few nice throws, but you would have liked to have seen maybe a little more opportunities for him to throw the football. But that wind really affected yeah. the play calling in the second half, so and, they didn't get many opportunities. And everyone's going to learn a lot more about the Aggies when they go play USC next week. Big game next Big week. Big game. Big game they next week. They do wonders for the Mount West yeah. if they go in there. Remember, USC's playing Alabama week one. They so, are. Maybe they'll know, be beat up a little bit. Could be. Yeah. Alabama's going to beat up some teams. <laughs> they certainly have. And they're going to be going in a hostile environment. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't ever take his foot off the gas pedal. <laughs> so the final score, Utah State 45, Weaver State 6. And Darius... Opening night, Mountain West football, first ever college football game streaming live on Twitter. This was fun. Certainly was fun. When we spoke to Matt Wells, one of the things that he told us that he always preaches to his team is protect the culture. Protect it. You got to protect the culture. 45 to 6, the Aggies did that today. They stepped up and then some. 428 yards on the ground, 208 from that guy right there, Devontae Mays. And everyone's already penciled in. Donald Pumphrey, first team all Mountain West running back. It could be Mays <laughs> in competition, sets the tone with 208 yards and three touchdowns. Set a great atmosphere high. and a great night for college football in Logan, Utah. For my broadcast partner, Darius Walker, I'm Ari Wolf saying goodnight. From Logan, Utah, where the final score is 45 to 6. For more live Mountain West Network broadcast features and information, go to campusinsiders.com. This has been a presentation of the Mountain West Network on Campus Insiders. Take care, everybody.